Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the website development unit for unit 6. In this unit we're going to be looking at learning aim B. So learning aim B focuses primarily on the design of our website. Now that you've got your assignment brief, one of the first objectives is to identify the target audience for your website. Remember that when you create your website, it's not for your client, it's for your client's clients. It is still however important that you identify what the client's user requirements are. For example, if they've asked you to create a website that's got four or five or even six pages, you identify that in your assignment work that you're going to be presenting to your tutors. Be clear as to what their requirements are. If there are specifics to appear on each of the web pages, make sure you identify that. We need to look at how we go about designing our website, the steps that we need to follow, and how we go about doing so. The first primary step that we need to do is do our planning using a storyboard. A storyboard should allow us to identify what elements we would like on our website. This could be things like buttons, images, sections of text or any interactive element. A storyboard should allow somebody to pick up our idea on a piece of paper and develop it without having any information from us other than what we've got on our storyboard. So it's very important when we create our storyboards to add as much information as we can. Information such as the style of text that we want to incorporate within our website design. We might also want to add what sort of background colours we're going to be using on our web pages. And if we know what image we're going to have, we might want to label that on our storyboard. Other information on our storyboards might be the size of the text that we want to use in the main body of our text. And other information such as what the button might link off to, but also the design element of that button what the background colour of the button is going to be, what the text colour is going to be, and any specific font type that we want to use. Next we want to create what's known as a hierarchy chart. A hierarchy chart will allow us to identify what pages are at the very top of our website structure. The next useful design document is our mood board. A mood board is a visual representation of a theme that may be running throughout your website. On a mood board you'd put things like textiles that you think would be very useful to be appearing on your website. Any sorts of colour themes that you'd like to have as a background colour or just in general. Any specific images that you think could be useful within your website. What you're hoping to do is build up a montage of all of the sorts of themes, styles and visual appearance that your website may have. This will allow you, when you're designing and creating your website, to have a clear understanding of what you're hoping to achieve in terms of a visual appearance. Once you've created your storyboard and your hierarchy chart, it's very important that you create what's known as a test plan. A test plan will allow us to identify what tests we're going to run once we've created our website to make sure that it's working in the way that we want it to. Things like our buttons, our navigation bar, these are all elements before we've even created it that we know we need to test before we even release our website to our general public or our users. Other tests that we might want to consider are things like spelling. Remember, your users to your website may want to read some information that needs to be very factually important and correct, so you're going to need to make sure that you spell check your work before you release it. Other tests that you might want to look at are things like whether an image will load, or whether a form will function in the way that you hope. These are all tests that even before we've begun the creation of our website, we know that we're going to need to check. And one of the final things that you need to do in a design stage is to get feedback on your initial designs or on your alternative set of designs. This feedback will allow you to work on any areas that you've overseen, give you an indication as to what your clients think, but also give you an idea of what your clients' clients are likely to think of your designs. Sometimes you can be so close to your designs and your ideas that you don't actually see that they might not work. Any feedback is always constructive, but remember, you don't always have to implement all of the feedback that you get. Some feedback may be given and may move you away from your original theme or idea or design. So if this happens, make sure that you give a rationale or a reason or a justification as to why you're choosing not to implement any of this feedback.